Picture this, hundreds of missiles streaking toward Guam at once, cruise missiles hugging the waves, ballistic missiles arcing through space, hypersonic glide vehicles pulling unpredictable maneuvers. Traditional air defense would crumble in seconds, but there's a new brain controlling America's Pacific Shield that changes everything. What if I told you the Army just deployed a system that can see through electronic jamming, track a thousand threats simultaneously, and coordinate weapons that were never designed to work together? This is IBCS, and it's turning Guam into an impenetrable fortress. Welcome to the future of integrated air defense, where every sensor becomes everyone's eyes and every launcher becomes part of a single, unified kill web. Today, we're diving deep into the Integrated Battle Command System, IBCS, the revolutionary technology that's fundamentally rewriting the rules of missile defense. We'll explore how this $2.7 billion program connects everything from F-35 fighters to Patriot batteries, creating what commanders call a single pane of glass for the battle space. Here's what we're covering. First, the technical wizardry that makes IBCS tick. Think of it as combat cloud computing on steroids. Then we'll trace its evolution from concept to deployment, including the failures that almost killed the program. Next, you'll see it in action through real test scenarios and simulated Pacific battles. We'll also tackle the controversies from cost overruns to integration nightmares. This matters right now because China's missile arsenal targeting Guam has grown fivefold in the past decade with over 1,300 intermediate range ballistic missiles pointed at the Pacific. America needs something revolutionary and IBCS just became operational. Let me break down IBCS in terms anyone can understand. Imagine you're at a concert with thousands of people, each recording video on their phones. Traditional air defense is like having one person trying to film the entire show from a single angle. IBCS, it's like instantly combining every phone's footage into one perfect 360 degree live stream where you never miss anything. At its core, IBCS consists of three main components working in perfect harmony. First, the Engagement Operations Center, or EOC. Think of this as mission control for missile defense. It's a high-tech shelter where operators see that unified battle space picture I mentioned. Second, the Integrated Fire Control Network Relay. These are the translators that let incompatible systems suddenly speak the same language. And third, the integrated collaborative environment, where commanders make split-second decisions based on fused data from dozens of sources. Here's where it gets fascinating. The new LTAMDS radar, that's lower tier air and missile defense sensor, pumps out twice the power of older Patriot radars through three antenna arrays using gallium nitride semiconductors. While traditional radars only see what's in front of them, LTAMDS creates overlapping 360-degree coverage. It's like upgrading from a flashlight to stadium lights. The real magic happens in the software. IBCS uses what Northrop Grumman calls sensor fusion, taking raw data from Marine Corps Gator radars, Navy Aegis systems, Air Force F-35s, even Space Force satellites, and combining it all in real time. The system processes millions of data points per second using AI to filter out false targets and electronic warfare interference. When that cruise missile pops over the horizon, IBCS already knows its speed, altitude, and projected impact point from five different sensors. But here's the kicker. It works with legacy systems too. You don't need to scrap billions in existing hardware. IBCS essentially hacks into older systems, making 1980s era Patriot launchers suddenly capable of using targeting data from 2020 sensors. One army general called it, giving your grandfather's truck a Tesla autopilot. IBCS wasn't born in a boardroom. It was born from blood and failure. During Operation Iraqi Freedom in 2003, two devastating friendly fire incidents exposed a critical flaw in American air defense. Patriot batteries operating independently shot down a British tornado fighter and a US Navy FA, 18 Hornet, killing three Allied aviators. The systems couldn't share what they were seeing. The Army launched the IBCS program in 2004 with an ambitious goal, replace eight different command systems with one unified network. Think about that challenge. It's like trying to make Windows, Mac, and Linux all run the same software simultaneously. Northrop Grumman won the prime contract in 2010, promising initial capability by 2016. They missed that deadline by six years. The path to success was littered with setbacks. In 2016, during crucial testing, evaluators declared the IBCS software neither mature nor stable. The system crashed repeatedly, couldn't maintain stable connections, and sometimes confused friendly aircraft for threats. 
The Army spent $2.7 billion before getting a working system, nearly double the original budget. But here's what changed everything. COVID-19. Seriously. The pandemic delay in 2020 gave engineers crucial time to fix fundamental architecture problems. When testing resumed at White Sands Missile Range, something clicked. The system successfully destroyed two cruise missiles while being actively jammed, a feat that stunned observers. The breakthrough moment came in August 2020. For the first time, IBCS created what operators call composite tracks, single, uninterrupted targeting solutions built from multiple radar sources. Even with electronic warfare trying to blind it, the system maintained perfect situational awareness. Poland watched these tests closely and immediately bought in, becoming the first international customer with a $2.5 billion order. Let's get tactical. Picture Guam 2025 Anderson Air Force Base hosts B-52 bombers. Upper Harbor shelters nuclear submarines. This 212-square-mile island is America's unsinkable aircraft carrier in the Pacific, and China knows it. Here's how IBCS changes the game during a raid scenario. At 0300 hours, Space Force satellites detect heat blooms from mainland China. Ballistic missiles launching. Simultaneously, Chinese destroyers 600 miles out fire hypersonic anti-ship missiles, while submarines launch cruise missiles from underwater. In the old world, each threat would be handled by separate, uncoordinated systems. With IBCS online, here's what happens. The LTAMDS radar on Mount Lamlam instantly detects the cruise missiles breaking the horizon. An F-35 orbiting at 40,000 feet spots the ballistic missiles in boost phase, feeding trajectory data to IBCS. Marine Corp Gator radars track the hypersonics. All this information flows into the EOC in milliseconds. The IBCS algorithms go to work. For the ballistic missiles, it assigns THAAD interceptors, perfect for exoatmospheric kills. The cruise missiles get targeted by Patriot Pac-3s positioned around the harbor. Here's where it gets brilliant. Instead of each battery firing two interceptors per target, standard doctrine, IBCS's superior tracking confidence means single shots. That doubles the defensive magazine depth. During December 2024's live fire test, IBCS proved this works. The system simultaneously engaged MQM-178 drones, simulating cruise missiles and a ballistic target, all while defending against electronic attack. Every intercept was successful. The Army called it the most complex integrated air defense test ever conducted. But here's the nightmare scenario IBCS was built for. The mass raid. Intelligence estimates suggest China could launch 300-plus missiles at Guam simultaneously. Traditional air defense would quickly run out of interceptors. IBCS changes the math through what operators call shoot-look-shoot -shoot tactics. It fires, assesses if the target's destroyed using multiple sensors, then only fires again if needed. This discipline could mean the difference between running dry after five minutes or fighting for an hour. Now let's talk about what's keeping generals up at night. IBCS isn't perfect, far from it. First, the price tag. That $2.7 billion development cost? It's just the beginning. Each IBCS set costs roughly $300 million, and the Army needs at least 18 battalions equipped. Poland's paying $1.4 billion just for software development. Critics argue we could have bought hundreds more interceptors for that money. Then there's the complexity problem. IBCS requires soldiers to master systems that make PlayStation look primitive. During initial training, operators needed six months to become proficient. The Army's now using AI tutors and virtual reality to cut that in half, but it's still a massive challenge. One instructor told me off the record, it's like teaching someone to conduct a symphony orchestra while juggling. The integration nightmare is real. Getting IBCS to talk to Navy systems required building a special bridge called JTMC, Joint Track Management Capability. It works, but adds another potential failure point. Cybersecurity experts worry about creating what one called the world's most attractive hacking target. If an adversary penetrates IBCS, they don't just blind one radar, they compromise the entire defensive network. Here's what really has critics fired up. Opportunity cost. While spending billions on IBCS, the Army delayed buying more THAAD batteries and SM-3 interceptors. Former Pentagon acquisition chief Frank Kendall questioned whether perfect integration matters if you run out of missiles. As he put it, the best command system in the world is useless without ammunition. There's also the vendor lock issue. Once you commit to IBCS, you're essentially married to Northrop Grumman forever. Every upgrade, every new sensor integration, every software patch goes through them. 
Poland discovered this when integrating their CAM missiles. What should have been a six-month project took two years and cost an extra $200 million. But perhaps the biggest controversy? Testing transparency. The Army classified most IBCS test results, only releasing success stories. When pressed by Congress, officials admitted to software stability events, Pentagon speak for crashes, during operational testing. How often? That's classified. So here's the bottom line on IBCS. After years of development, billions invested, and dozens of tests, three game-changing takeaways you need to remember. First, IBCS fundamentally transforms missile defense from isolated systems to an integrated network. We're talking about a 100% increase in defended area without adding a single new launcher, just by networking existing assets better. When LTAMDS radars achieve full operational capability in 2025, a single Patriot Battalion will have the coverage of two traditional battalions. That math matters when you're defending 7,000 miles of Pacific coastline. Second, the any sensor best shooter philosophy is revolutionary but risky. IBCS can theoretically coordinate an F-35's radar, guiding a Navy SM-6 launched from a destroyer to intercept a target tracked by an Army Sentinel radar. That's unprecedented integration, but it also means a software glitch could cascade across all services simultaneously. Third, Guam is the test case for the future of homeland defense. If IBCS succeeds there against potential Chinese missile barrages, expect to see it deployed everywhere from South Korea to Eastern Europe. Poland's already operational with six batteries. Japan's expressed interest. Even Australia is asking questions. The strategic implications are massive. China's anti-access strategy relies on overwhelming missile salvos to push American forces back from the first island chain. IBCS potentially negates that advantage by maximizing the efficiency of every defensive interceptor. Instead of needing three or four interceptors per incoming missile, current doctrine, IBCS might achieve near parity, one defensive shot per offensive missile. But here's what should really grab your attention. The Army's already working on IBCS 2.0. Integration with directed energy weapons is coming. Imagine IBCS coordinating high energy lasers for cheap kills on cruise missiles while saving kinetic interceptors for ballistic threats. That's not science fiction. It's in the 2027 budget request. The human factor remains crucial. The best network is only as good as its operators. That young specialist sitting in an EOC on Guam, managing dozens of tracks while adversaries try to jam, spoof, and overwhelm the system. They're the real linchpin. The Army's investing heavily in AI-assisted decision-making, but ultimately, a human pulls the trigger. Here's my closing thought, and I want you to really consider this. Is IBCS the silver bullet for missile defense, or have we created a digital house of cards that one clever cyber attack could topple? The answer might determine whether places like Guam remain free and open, or become the opening casualties in a Pacific war. The system deploys operationally this year. We're about to find out if 18 years and nearly $3 billion bought us a revolution or just really expensive evolution. What do you think? Is networking everything together brilliant or dangerous? Drop your thoughts in the comments. Does integrated defense multiply capability or vulnerability? And if you found this deep dive valuable, that subscribe button helps us bring you more analysis of the tech reshaping global security.